everyone and welcome back to my channel. Thanks for tuning in again. I hope you guys are all hanging in there through the madness that is 2020. So for today's case, we are gonna be talking about a missing child. These cases are always so emotional to work on, but of course, very important as well. And we're coming up on the year anniversary since this child has been missing. This is Dulce Maria Alaves. She was five years old when she went missing on September 16th, 2019. This is another one of those cases where there wasn't too much to work with, but I was able to scrape enough together. But before I jump into the details of this case, I wanted to remind you guys about our latest Thorn collab with Candles by Victoria. This one has already been burned, so I know it looks a little insane, but this was the Thorn Rose Candle. I will insert a video of what it looks like before it's lit. So 15% of the sales from this candle will be going to Thorn, which is fighting against human trafficking of children and child exploitation online. But what's really cool about our collab is we are not only offering that 15% on those candles, we are offering it across the entire Candles by Victoria website. If you've never heard of Candles by Victoria, it's a family owned company out of Texas. They hand pour all of their candles and they do some really intricate designs. This one, for example, is a moon sleepy time themed candle in jasmine which is my favorite scent and they have seriously every scent you can possibly imagine and they even have a way to create your own scent so literally something for everybody and now we're going into fall so i know a lot of you need your fall candles and i know a lot of you probably like bath and body works but the thing is is bath and body works is not cruelty free so you can feel good about shopping at candles by victoria because not only are you giving back to thorn but you're also shopping at a small business i ordered a bunch of fall candles last night so I wanted to list off some of the scents so you can get an idea of the variety that she has. Apple cinnamon butter, cinnamon donuts, pumpkin blueberry crumble, pumpkin cupcake, leaves, trick or treat, candy corn, country fair funnel cake, and lavender pumpkin. So if you like fall candles and want to give back, be sure to shop with the link in my description box. It only works if you use that link. And again, I'm donating 100% of my affiliate earnings. I am not making any money off this. So this is Dulce Maria Olives. She was born on April 25th, 2014 in Bridgeton City, New Jersey. So Bridgeton is a fairly small community and it's in the Southern part of the state. It's very tight knit and has around 25,000 people living in it. Dulce is a very beautiful little girl. She has beautiful big brown eyes, brown hair, and she's about three feet tall. And this is her mother, Noema Alaves Perez. Noema had Dulce when she was very young. Dulce was five years old at the time that she went missing and Noema was 19 so just do the math and she also had a son named Manuel who was born two years after Dulce was born so at the time that all of this is happening Manuel and Dulce actually lived with their grandparents in Bridgetown and then Noema lived in an apartment nearby and so when it comes to custody her mom and her were sharing custody of both of the kids. So like I said, this all happens in September, right around the start of school. And Dulce had just started kindergarten, very exciting time. So it was September 16th of last year and Dulce went to school that day like normal. So that day, Noema picked up all the kids from school and she also had her eight-year-old sister with her. It was a normal day of school. The kids were in a good mood, but had a lot of energy. So she took them to a local gas station to get some ice cream and also got some lottery cards and then she decided to take them to the park so they could kind of run off their energy. So they end up going to the Bridgeton City Park. I'll put in some pictures of the park, but if you want to see it in 3D, there's actually a video on YouTube where you can kind of scroll around with your finger and completely see 3D view of the park. And this could be helpful for you in trying to picture this whole case playing out. Unfortunately, I'm not able to include 3D footage in my video, but I will link it below. It's definitely interesting to look at. So they pull up to the park and they park near the basketball court and Dulce and her younger brother get out of the car and they're three and five at this time and they run over to the park by themselves to the playground. Noema stays in the car with her younger sister and I've seen some reports that they were doing homework and some people have said that they were scratching off the lottery tickets but either way they stayed in the car and Dulce and her brother Manuel ran to the park which is about 30 yards away from where she's parked. Now she said that she could see the park so she was watching them, but there has been a lot of criticism at her about, you know, letting the kids leave the car by themselves. I personally feel like three and five 
is really young to let your kids run around in a public space unless you're right with them just because unfortunately the world is not safe and with everything I know there's no way I would let my kids do that and I'm sure she regrets it so there's no point in you know like rubbing it in but yeah definitely has been some criticism so Noama said that she was able to see the kids the whole time other than a five to ten minute period where she was not able to see them the only area that she could not see was the swing set because there was this small hill that kind of blocked it and when she couldn't see them she just figured that that meant the two of them were on the swings and all was good but after those ten minutes she got a little concerned and she and her sister decided to get out of the car and go check on the kids and as they're walking up to the playground they see Dulce's little brother Manuel crying and his ice cream is on the ground. At first they thought that's why he was crying, that you know his ice cream had dropped, but then they realized that Dulce was nowhere around. When they asked him where his sister was, he pointed over at these buildings near the park. This is when that 3D video is really helpful to see, but there are these two like utility buildings that are used to store different types of equipment to keep the park maintained, like lawn mowers and sprinkler equipment, things like that. And these buildings have a path near them that goes right to the street. There's kind of two ways to access the park, two paths, one from the way Noema came from the car and one that's over near the utility buildings. They're kind of dingy looking and scary and they're locked, but he said that she was playing around there. But the problem is, is he's only three years old and he's not able to fully form complete sentences and truly explain what happened. He just points over to the building. So Noema walks over to the buildings and starts looking around to see if she can find Dulce. She's calling her name out and Dulce is nowhere to be found. Noema said that at first she tried not to panic, that she thought that Dulce was playing some type of game, like hide and seek. So as far as other people at the park that day, Noema said that there was a man and his sons leaving the park at the time that they arrived, but he was not there at the time that she went missing. And then there was also a group of a few girls playing basketball on the basketball court. The courts aren't right next to the park though, so they didn't have the greatest view of it. They're more close to the parking lot. So Noema was under the impression that they pretty much had the whole park to themselves, so she was super confused. But after some time went by and she could not find Dulce, she decided to call the police. No one, where's your emergency? Um, I can't find my daughter. Okay, when was the last time you seen her? We were, we were there at the park and people said that somebody, probably somebody took her. Okay. How old is she? She's five years old. Okay. And what park are you at? Here in Bristol Park. So as you can tell, she sounds very upset in the beginning of the call. She sounds pretty panicked. She's crying a little bit. And then she starts telling the dispatchers about what the girls at the basketball court had seen. All right. You didn't see anyone else around there that she could possibly have went with no not no that i know of because we didn't saw no one there's just some other people that they're here that said that they saw her running and they they said that they saw two per they saw two men they saw a black guy and they saw so who's, who's, a mexican who's saying, man with who's two saying kids they, who's saying that they saw them but there's people here in the basketball court that they saw her, they said that they saw her running. The girls that were at the basketball court had seen a black man in a red car with blacked out windows pull up over near those utility buildings just as Dulce was running over to the buildings. So that is pretty scary and very likely could have been who abducted her. So police rushed to the scene. They started looking for her on foot and they also brought dogs to try to track her scent. They were even able to obtain some security footage that was around the area, but they were not able to pick up Dulce on any of the cameras. So sadly, Noema had to leave without Dulce that day. The next day, there was still no sign of Dulce. And it wasn't until then, actually that night at 10 p.m., that police decided to put out the Amber Alert, which isn't super helpful going out that much later after someone has gone missing, but I mean, I guess it's good. When Dulce went missing, she was wearing a yellow shirt with an elephant on it and black and white pants. Apparently there was also reports of a Hispanic man being in the area. So they actually included that in the Amber Alert. They said it was a Hispanic man who was pretty skinny and around five to seven, 30 to 35 years old, had acne all over his face, was wearing orange shoes, red pants, 
a black shirt and a white baseball cap. Noema said that she was really worried and also confused because she felt like Dulce wouldn't have run up to strangers. She said that she had really drilled it into her not to talk to people she didn't know and gave her the whole stranger danger spiel plenty of times. She said that her daughter was very cautious and that she wouldn't have just run up to some random stranger and definitely would not have voluntarily left with them. And she had always told Dulce that if someone was abducting her or hurting her or anything like that to just scream as loud as you can and hopefully someone will help you. So that same day, a ton of strangers came out to help look for Dulce. The park was pretty big, over a thousand acres. So there was quite a bit of land for people to search. And of course they weren't just searching for Dulce. They're combing the ground to see if they can find any clues, you know, a wrapper, a piece of gum, a cigarette butt, anything like that that possibly even has some DNA could crack the case. On September 18th, there was a vigil held at Bridge in City Park to continue to help raise awareness. Father, I pray even now, oh God, that whoever has her, oh God, that they would feel conviction, oh God, from on high, oh God, and that they would send this baby home, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, let them not rest, oh God, until justice is served. Let them not be easy, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. God, your angels have authority. Your angels have control, oh God. The enemy has no power. He has no authority. He has no dominion over this baby. He has no dominion over our community, oh God. You touch each and every one of our hearts. I pray that you will allow Dulce to feel our love even from here, oh God. Even from Bristol, New Jersey, where the community stands as one. I pray, oh God, that you will allow her to feel our love for her, oh God. And there were also flyers put up all over town. Most people that live in this area know about Dulce. There's been a real community outreach to the family. On September 19th, the family went onto the media and made a public plea for help. Please, if you have any information, help us find our grand, my, my granddaughter. Do not be afraid of the police. They also announced that they were offering a $20,000 reward for anyone that could give information about who the suspect was. And since there is a large population of undocumented immigrants in this area, they decided to make it so that anyone who did come forward with information would be protected from being reported to ICE. But even after that, no one came forward with information and there were really no leads for police to work with. Now, pretty much right off the bat, people in the community and people online were very suspicious of the whole situation and suspicious of Noema. Uh, something don't sound too right. It just sounds suspect. Something sounds suspicious. Something's not right. There's no red van and there's no man. Who is it? Find some, some, some kind of resolution to this problem because this is a real serious problem. So where did they get the story about the red van? Me as a mother, I'm not gonna let my three-year-old and a five-year-old out of my sight that far. A lot of people thought it was pretty suspicious that she would let them just run off at such a young age. And also people have been very critical of her emotions. You know, it's really hard to say with something like this. Of course, you really never want to judge someone on their emotions. Noema has been accused of not showing enough emotion, that she doesn't seem panicked or sad or acting like how a mother should, which of course there's no textbook of how someone is supposed to act when someone goes missing. Obviously we all react to grief differently and some people can go into shock when someone's missing, but her lack of emotions have definitely made people question her. And it is something you have to consider. I understand you can't determine guilt that way, but it definitely can be considered. I mean, there is a whole branch of the FBI dedicated to behavior analysis for a reason. It is important, but I believe people too quickly have jumped on Noema, assuming that she somehow did it. Online, there has been a lot of talk about how she possibly sold her daughter into human trafficking or something like that. And of course, I have no idea. It's possible that she could have done that. That does happen, sadly. I mean, it's a sick world. There have been people that have sold their children. Dr. Phil did an episode on this case and I can't show any of the clips because Dr. Phil will claim my ass and probably remove the video in about two seconds. But he interviews Noema and he straight up asks her if she had any involvement. Did you sell your daughter? And she said, no, of course not. And you know, shut that down. But what was interesting is even Dr. Phil brought up that she was one of the most emotionally flat parents of a victim that he had ever come across, but 
I don't know. A lot of people have mixed opinions on Dr. Phil anyway. And I know she wants to come back home because she doesn't, she doesn't like being far away from her family. Instead of being on social media, writing negative comments, come out here and let's go look for her. There's definitely not enough evidence to say Noema had anything to do with this, and I would never want to accuse someone of that. But of course, you gotta look at all possibilities. Police also thought it could be someone that they know personally. In most abduction cases, it ends up being someone that the child knew or someone that the parent knew that does the abduction. So they asked Noema, you know, do you think that there's anyone within the family that would want to take her? And she said no. They asked if she had any enemies, you know, if there was anyone that would want to hurt her. And the only one that she could come up with was this guy who had pursued her and she wasn't interested in him, kind of turned him down, and that he was upset that she turned him down. But there's no other reason to believe it was him. There's no evidence. There's no information about him. So, you know, take that for what you will. At one point, there was a lot of talk online about Noema eating pizza during one of the searches because there's been many searches. And this is like the day after Dulce went missing. And people, I guess, came up to her and were like, why are you eating pizza when your daughter is missing? And I guess this is the first time that she had eaten in a full 24 hours since Dulce had first went missing. So she was like really lightheaded. And at this time she was five months pregnant. So she was just taking care of herself. I mean, I'm sure someone around her was like, you need to eat. On September 20th, the reward was raised to $25,000. And the next day, the 21st, it was raised to $35,000. When they were making the announcement about this, they actually had a bunch of frozen dolls out all of Dulce's favorite toys. I guess she really loves Frozen. Hey, so several weeks passed and there were no signs of Dulce. There were no leads in the case. It was like she just vanished. On October 9th, police came out with a sketch of a man that they're interested in speaking with. And they haven't been super clear about why they think it was this guy. I'm not sure if that's just off of witness statements or what, um, but here is the image. Also on that same day, they ended up bringing the reward up to $52,000 for any information on this guy. They also started putting billboards up around the area to help spread awareness about the case. Eventually November came and there was still no signs, no leads, and the community had a vigil on November 16th. So let's talk about possible theories here. So Noema believes that her daughter was taken by whoever was driving that red van. It's possible that someone was just lurking around in that area. You know, sadly predators will hang out around parks where they know there's gonna be kids and just watch. So maybe someone was just waiting, saw the kids and decided to take their shot. A lot of people have brought up, well, why wouldn't they have taken both kids? Well, because it, first of all, it's harder to take two kids. Um, but second of all, they could have specifically wanted a little girl. I mean, I'm not exactly sure, but it definitely makes sense for them to just take one, especially if this was just one person. I mean, there's reports of a Hispanic man and a black man there. So I'm not sure if there's actually two men or if there's just one person, but still it would be hard to take two kids. But what's weird is they would have had to like put their hand over her mouth or something, or maybe they had something in their car that they were able to lure her into the car with quietly. But like I said earlier, her mom taught her to scream if someone was doing something to you. So the girls that were over at the basketball court said that they couldn't hear anything. They didn't hear anyone screaming. So some people think that maybe she went with this person on her own free will. Was it someone that she knew? There was the theory that her biological father took her for a period of time. His name is Edgar Perez. Apparently when Dulce was born, he wasn't very interested in being a dad and actually didn't believe that Dulce was his daughter. However, later on, he had decided that she looks like him and was definitely his daughter. When she was about one or two, he had expressed interest in possibly getting custody of her, but he never followed through, so he never had custody of her. But it wasn't something that they were fighting over. It's not like Noema was stopping him from getting custody or anything like that. And Noema actually thought that he had been deported because he hadn't been in the picture for a while. But the FBI, ended up finding him following up and determined that he had nothing to do with this. And of course there is the theory that Noema had something to do with this. And these rumors are mostly fueled by her lack of emotion, like I said, especially after she went on Dr. Phil in December of 2019. She just got a lot of backlash about how flat she was emotionally. A lot of people think Noema seems very suspicious in this interview, and I definitely want you to make up your own mind on that, so be sure to check out those interviews. I'll link them below. Like I said, I can't include them for copyright reasons, but 
they're interesting. Basically, she just gives Dr. Phil very short, one-wordy answers. She seems kind of disinterested and almost bored during the interview. Also in her interview, she talked about how she was given a polygraph test, but was never given the results of that. She just didn't come across as a mom who was incredibly worried about her child. And I mean, I hate to judge a mother who's missing their child, but I will say the interview came off as really weird to me as well. I mean, most parents of missing children are desperate. They are very emotional and animated and serious about finding their kids. But Noema doesn't seem that way. But again, it's really hard to judge. So I want to hear your opinions on that. And I'm not saying that she's guilty. Of course, everyone's innocent until actually proven guilty with real evidence, not just on their behavior. But it's odd. That's all I'll say. At one point, police ended up taking two cell phones from Noema to search. I guess she had two phones. I don't know why. But they gave one of them back to her, which many people have said probably means that there was nothing suspicious on at least one of them, but we don't know about that other phone. So in January of 2020, a video came out online by a psychic talking about Dulce. She said specifically to check the school that Dulce attended and the wooded area behind the school. She went to Bucks Hutton Road School and lots of people, including the police, actually went out to this area because of what the psychic said and tried to look in that area, but nothing was found. In February, the reward was bumped up to $75,000 and that is where it stands today. Then in March of 2020, there was an interesting update. Three strange letters that reference Dulce were sent to Ohio. Actually, it was two letters and a postcard and they were sent to a public library and this racetrack area in Austin town. And this is in the Eastern part of Ohio, pretty close to the Pennsylvania border. And the postcard says a couple different things including look for Dulce Alaviz, age five, kidnapped from Bridgetown, New Jersey. Look website for story photos, Dr. Phil. And it says 76 truck stop dead and street entrance woods, please look. And so the police actually took those letters seriously and searched in that area. And this is off of Youngstown 76 Auto Truck Plaza on Interstate 80. I guess about 10 police officers went out there and they searched over 30 to 40 acres in that area. They even brought in dogs, they brought in drones, they used infrared technology to search. But unfortunately, again, nothing was found. The postcard had been sent to that racetrack that I said, and it was also connected to a casino. And the postcard actually had a return zip code from back in Mexico, but the rest of the return address was ineligible. And it also wasn't postmarked, but they do believe that it was delivered by the US Postal Service to the casino. And then there was a letter sent to the library and the letter was like two pages. It was handwritten and strangely enough, it was actually postmarked from Cleveland. Cleveland is about 70 miles away from Austin town. Now the letters are not public, so the contents of them are not out there, but apparently most of it was not legible anyway. They were actually only able to make out a few words in the letter. They were able to find the words Alaska, Mexico, border, 1776, Civil War, New England town, and kids' homes orphanage. After these first two letters were found, a third letter came in and it was actually discovered in a mailbox of an ice cream shop. It was an ice cream shop in Weathersfield Township, which is a few miles away from the library and the casino in Austin town. The owner of the shop found the letter, thought it was really strange and took it into the police. Now all three of these letters were handwritten and it seemed to be written by the same person. But as far as what has been released to the public, nothing has really come out of these letters so far. Back in May, authorities did say that the the FBI is trying to get a hold of Dulce's father again. I'm not sure why they were doing that or if they have. I wasn't able to find any more information on that. But as of now, police say that they think it's most likely that Dulce was kidnapped. It seems like that is what happened either way. Now, you may be someone who believes that Noema had something to do with that and that's possible, but there's really no strong evidence for that. And if that's not the case, I would feel really bad for a mom who's already lost their child to be accused of doing something they didn't. But of course, at the same time, it does happen. So I wanna know your opinions on that. I wanna know what you think here. The family does have a GoFundMe page if you would like to help donate so that they can get a private investigator if they just can't afford it. So I will link that down below. If you have any information that could lead to solving this case, 
case or to finding Dulce, please get that information to the right people. I will have phone numbers and stuff for you to do that in the description box. Of course, the family is trying to raise as much awareness about this case as possible. So please share this video or share some information and a picture of Dulce on your social media, especially if you live in that area. But that's it for me today, guys. Be sure to let me know your thoughts on this case below and make sure to give me a thumbs up if you want to see more cases like this in the future. Also, be sure to check out Candles by Victoria. That link will be below. But that's it for me today, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Stay safe out there and I will see you next week.